Hello, welcome to Mix Training. This is Better Mix, and today I'm going to show you how to render volumetrics with Redshift. All right, so now how do we render volumes in Redshift? It's a really common question, so let's do this. So I have this scene with a helicopter here or sci-fi helicopter here. We're gonna add some lights and render volumetric lights. So I have all these lights here are uh, for the pattern of this effect. And we're gonna start with just one light, which is gonna be just this. Adding one line from the top, you can see it's just doing that really nice looking volumetric effect on, on, the, uh, on the image. So what we need to do for this is very simple. So we start the render, we have nothing. Let me activate the light, we have that. But that is because I have in my Redshift node, if I go to the uh, Redshift tab here, and then go all the way here to the volume tab, I have this enabled. You can see if I disable that, that's just the effect of the light. If I enable it, now I have that volumetric light. Uh, but um, you might not have that already if you haven't uh, put any contribution any contribution scale here in the uh, actual light. So by default, this is gonna be zero. Uh, so just check here if you have, if I put this higher, you can see I'm gonna that illuminate more that volume that it's global to the scene now, now that I uh, enabled this volume here. I can change the parameters from here if I want, but for this scene, I'm not, I'm not gonna change anything here. But you can see this looks pretty cool here just by doing Enabling this, going to the light, and enabling uh, contribution scale here. If I put it all the way back to zero, you can see it's like if that volume wasn't there. It is there, but we are not illuminating it with this light. So you can see if I put it all the way up, it's just gonna illuminate a lot on that volume. I'm gonna lower it down. You can see I have a bunch of lights that I added to this object. I can uh, turn on the lights on the front there which make it look pretty cool. This one, is it on? Yeah, it is on. This one, it's not on. See, I have some lights in the front there, which makes it look pretty cool. Turn on a few more lights and this looks amazing. So that's all you need to render uh, lights with volumetric fog like this. So now, how do we uh, render actual volumes from Houdini? So let's do that now. All right, so I have a blank new scene here. I'm gonna just make uh, my our friend Roberto. It's gonna be the star here. And then we're gonna make an explosion out of Roberto from the particles, uh, I mean, for the pyro shelf. Just so we have something really quickly so we can render something. So let's just save a few frames. Let me just turn that simulation a little bit higher so we don't have that low res of a scene. That's still really low res. All right, so now we have something that is, that is not so low res as before. Uh, and we can uh, just uh, render this really quickly with uh, Redshift. So let's create a camera. I think that's gonna be cool for the uh, side there. Let's create a floor just to, be, to have something there, I'll make it bigger. Let's create one light. I'm gonna just uh, go up like this, create a redshift light from the uh, redshift shelf. Control click on there, on that. Uh, let's uh, change it to an area light. Let's uh, make it uh, bigger. It's really small right now. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Kinda like that, right? That's the area light. Um, what else do I need? Now we need a shader for this, right? We have a camera, we have a light, now we need a shader. So let's go to the uh, OVJ context. I mean, let's go to the shop context and then let's create, by, by default, uh, Houdini creates this fireball shader, but we don't need it because we can render with that refresh shift. So let's go and create an, an, an RS volume shader. And now we need two things here. We need the scatter channel and the emission channel here. So let's go to the simulation, which is this spiral import. 
you can see we have those channels here. We need to uh, plug the density and I like to plug the heat. Some people like to use the temperature, but I like the heat. It's, it looks better for me. Now we need to type those channels here, density for uh, the actual volume itself. And then for the emission of it, we need the heat. So that's what we are doing here, typing the, den piping the density and the heat to the volume. Now let's apply this uh, material to this guy here. Apply that. Now the last thing we need to do for this is apply the uh, object parameters here from the shelf, from the redshift shelf, and then go to the parameters, for the redshift WJ parameters, go all the way to the back to the volume section, enable it, and then change this to Houdini primitive because we are using Houdini primitives. If you are using BGV files, so you're loading, you can use this option here. In our case, we're going to use that. And let's not use the velocity grids now, but you can uh, enable velocities if you want to do that here. All right. So now, uh, just save this. Let's create a redshift node uh, to render. And we don't need to do anything special here, but I'm going to just uh, make the resolution a little bit lower and render it here. And there we go. You can see that's the uh, the redshift uh, volume meets there. The camera is pretty intense. I mean, the light is pretty intense. Uh, let's go and make the light a little bit less intense. Diffuse scale. Something like that. The floor doesn't have a shader, so it's really, uh, really uh, reflective. Let's just create a shader for the floor really quick. There is material and make it a little bit less uh, bright. Let me just stop that and apply that shader to the grid really quick and render again. You can see this renders really quick. So I don't want this shader to be uh, reflective at all, like that. All right. So now the volume looks like uh, not well, like we would like it to look. It looks just white. Well, that is because we have just black to white here. Uh, we should have like proper colors here, like we have here. We can kind of copy these colors actually and and put them here if if you want. Uh, let's try something here or uh, I mean orange here there and kind of a yellowish here Like that you can see this is starting to look like a proper uh, Explosion you can also play with the scale of the uh, explosion here So a few more parameters you can play with uh, also the uh, Coefficient here is really important to play with so you can have a little bit more uh Absorption of the light there. See that's looking a little bit better. So once you play with these parameters a little bit more, tweak your colors a little bit better, you have a really nice looking explosion. You can see that's looking already really quick, and just redshift renders this really really quickly. You can see the uh, shadows and the smoke there. It's pretty cool. You can go to the advanced stuff and play with the ranges, which is pretty cool to play with as well. I, I do play with this a lot, but and you can see you can get more smoke out of the density there. Uh, you can even cut uh, a little bit of the emission and stuff like that. It's pretty cool to play with these ranges when you have uh, something that you like. You can get really nice looks here. You can see that makes it a little bit more bright, more overexposed on the highlights, which uh, sometimes that should be happening with your explosion. So don't just play with the colors, also play with the ranges here, which makes it uh, a little bit better sometimes. All right, so that's it. That's the basic, uh, the basics of this. Of course, this is a little bit low res. You need more resolution to make it look better, but the basics are there. And now you can go and make your explosions look pretty cool uh, on your own. Uh, the steps for this are, uh, creating your explosion, of course, creating your shader, plugging the uh, correct uh, grids here, the density field and the heat field here, then uh, apply that to the object, um, uh, create the redshift properties and enable the volume of this, and then you just render it. 
that's the, that's the basics of this. For rendering volumetric lights, you can go here and enable in the Redshift tab the volume here. You can even maybe make this light volumetric as well. And, and we have a bunch of light because that's an area light. So it's emitting a lot of light all over the place. But you can see this is pretty damn quick for Redshift. It really, really renders amazingly fast. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. This was pretty fun. Uh, volumes in Redshift just open a bunch of doors. They are really, really cool. I really like rendering uh, volumes with Redshift. That's it. I'm going to see you guys in the next one, right? Take care. Cheers.